Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church Newark. We're glad to have those of you that are here with us in person and those that are joining us online. So let us stand and sing our opening hymn, 10,000 Reasons. Oh 
time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation, we believe, we believe, in this broken generation. dark you help us see there is only one salvation we believe we believe we believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ we believe in the Holy Spirit and he's given us 
God the Father, we believe in his Son, and we believe in the Holy Spirit. And let's go to prayer in that, in that understanding that he is with us. Oh, gracious and loving God, we thank you that you are with us and that you never leave us or forsake us, that your promises are real and that we can trust in you. Lord, we thank you that you are great and mighty to be praised. Oh, Lord, we thank you. And, and Lord, forgive us when we walk away from you or slip away from you and let us come back closer to you, Lord. Help us to re be reminded that you are the way, the truth, and the life and that we come to you through the Son and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we lift up those who have lost loved ones during this time, and we lift up those who are ill and ask for your healing power to be upon them. We praise you, Lord, for your presence in our lives, and we thank you that you hear our prayers and that the Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf when we can't even say those words. And we lift up, Lord, those that have gone through these terrible tragedies of the earthquake, wind, and fire. We remember, Lord, those that are, have gone through those times and, and need your help. And may they know, Lord, that our prayers and our hands are there to help them. Lord, we thank you and praise you. And we give you, Lord, all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning is going to come from Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 11, and then 26 through 39. And this is one of my favorite passages. You, however, are not in the realm of flesh, but in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through the wordless groans. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And if we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose, for those God foreknew, he would also predestine to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against them who God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who is raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him for, who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither the height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Well, today we have started on this new series, and it's called The Words of the Church. 
And one of the words that we use so often in our language is the Trinity. And actually, it's the mystery of the Trinity. In the Trinity, we talk about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And how does this all come together? It's hard to understand totally, and it's a mystery. So don't try to understand it to get it totally down because God is bigger than we are. But here's some understanding that we can have. If you had a hard-boiled egg and you looked at the egg and you see the outside, you have the shell, right? There's the shell. Then you peel it and the inside, the next layer is the white. That's right. The next side inside is the white. And it, it's still the egg, right? Okay, then you go through the white, and in the center of the white, you find the yolk. And in the yolk is a, a big uh, nutrient that's there, but it's still the egg. So you have three parts, yet one egg. Well, here is the understanding of there are three parts to God, but one God. Um, the verse promises us that God will never leave us nor forsake us. It's one of those things that we have. Um, the story and the song that I kind of, again, going back to a song, that they will know we are Christians by our love. The last verse goes, I'll praise to the Father from whom all things come. I'll praise to Christ Jesus, his only Son. And I'll praise to the Spirit that makes us one. For they will know we are Christians by our love. Yes, all of these come together, and that's how we know is the love of God is through all of these images, and that's how we are able to share God's love with other. The word Trinity appears nowhere in the, in the scriptures. Um, it actually came from Theophilus of Antioch, and it came around 170 A.D. And... We don't hear the word Trinity, but we hear about God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the Gospels as well as um, in our other letters from Paul, as we heard this morning. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus is telling his disciples that they are to go out into the world and make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So the concept of the Trinity isn't one that is new. It's just the word Trinity came there to help us understand and, um, what can't fully be understood. And the true nature of God is this Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, just like us. As a person, we have many different roles. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a pastor, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, but I'm still the same person in all of those roles. That's what it is, that this is the same God in all of these phases of God. Let's start, though, first of all, with God. God's role as the Father. He is the source of all all living things. He's the creator. He's the source of all living things and all that moves and has meaning. He is the one who sustains our lives. He is our creator and provider. He will meet our needs. He never forgets us nor forsakes us. His, that is his promise to us. Norman Vincent Peale tells an executive who had in his office three boxes. The first box said, incoming, the second box said outgoing, and the third box said undecided. Most of his mail was in the undecided. But then the executive decided that he needed the fourth box. So he put the fourth box in and it was labeled, with God all things are possible. Don't we need to have that fourth box in our lives? With God all things are possible. So we have God, even when we may not feel it, even when we might not know it, God is sustaining us. He is there. He is like the seeds that he has already planted. Did you know that there are seeds that have been um, planted and in the ground? They tell us that thistle seeds will last through even a holocaust. But 
that it's the whole um, it's the whole thing that seeds that are there, even if it seems like it's drought and nothing can grow, if water comes, these seeds that have been laying dormant in the ground can sprout and produce. And so God's love in us is like that. We might not feel it, we might not think we're growing or sprouting, but when we get some of the power of the Holy Spirit and God's love touches us, it can grow and bloom and we can be these major gifts that God has designed us to be. You see, God created us in his own image and he said, this is good. He's created us. He's claimed us. We are his. And he loves us. He is the loving father. Jesus referred to the father as Abba, which means daddy. It's a term of endearment. It was that close of kind of relationship. And that's what God wants for us, is to have that personal close relationship with him. So now we have that God, the Godhead. The second part of it is Jesus Christ. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. To affirm that God was in Christ is to affirm that God became one of us. Did you hear that? To affirm that God was in Christ is to affirm that God became one of us. He walked where we have walked he, and will walk where he walk where we will walk and, he, and will walk with us. You see that Jesus came to earth so that we might know God better. God had tried to talk to the Israelites through prophets, through signs and wonders, and for a while the people were changed. When this, a prophet would come and say, repent, and they would repent. And then after a while, they kind of got back into their old habits and slid away and removed themselves from God. So what did God do? God sent another prophet. And he did this several times, but the people would only stay there for a while. So finally he says, if I send my only son, maybe they'll get the connection. And I'm going to make him fully human and fully divine so that he will know everything a human can feel. But it will have my power behind him and in him, and through him. And with that, we have the Son, Jesus, who was born. Remember the Apostles' Creed? Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. He is there. He is there. And we affirm that. Jesus has come to show us life from God's perspective. Historian Scott Letourneau uh, reminds us that as centuries pass, the evidence is accumulating that measured by the evidence of history, Jesus is the most influential life ever lived on the planet. A man who lived 33 years has been the most influential life that has ever lived on the planet. And he lived over 2,000 years ago, and yet he's still influencing and changing who we are. It's because not only was he fully human and could connect with us, but he was fully God and could have that power to be raised from the dead because he was son, the son, God's only son. Even though we may not know all we would like to know about the historical Jesus, what we do know has effect on our lives forever. We can sing with confidence of what a friend we have in Jesus, blessed assurance Jesus is mine, um, all of the old hymns that are there, but we can sing the new hymns of I believe in God the Father, I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in his Son. We can sing those because it's the spirit that gives us life. And that's what carries us through. It's a part that, to know that God sent his son so that we might have that intimate relationship with a human being and know what that was like. Remember when Jesus is with his disciples in the upper room 
And it tells us about this in John chapter 14. He's talking to his disciples and he said, in a little while you will no longer see me, but the world, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live in you. And then he goes on and says, I will not leave you orphaned. I will send you the Holy Spirit who will be there to be your great comforter. And so our third point of this in the Trinity, the third part is the Holy Spirit. God is alive and at work in our world through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he is with each one of us. The Holy Spirit, as it said in the reading we had this morning, was that the Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf when we cannot pray, when we don't know the words to say. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. It's part of that understanding that it is there to, to be, to give us life. And the Holy Spirit is also what gives us direction and, and empowers us to move in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is with each of us today. There's a story about a, a priest who is trying to make his congregation more liturgical. So he's working with them, and he said, now, one of the ways that we can do this is um, I will say, the Lord be with you, and you reply, and also with you. So he practiced this with his congregation over and over and over. The Lord be with you, and they would come back, and also with you. So the Sunday morning that this was going to happen, that they were going to make it the official stance, that this was going to be a part of their worship, he gets up, and the microphones are not working, of course. The microphones are not working. So the priest is up there trying to work, and he says very loudly, there's something wrong with the microphones. And the congregation responds, and also with you. <laughs> there is something wrong with all of us, but thank God the Lord is with us and empowers us. God is with us empowers us, uses us, even when there's something wrong with us. God's spirit is dwelling within us and empowers us to do the work that he asks us to accomplish. There was a man who had listened to this beautiful violin and he said, I have to have that instrument. That instrument is so gorgeous, it makes the most beautiful sound. And so he buys it and then he tries to play it. And when he plays it, all it does is go, ee, 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 ee. And he says, what's wrong? It was because it was the spirit and the power of the person who was playing it that gave it the music. When God works through us with his spirit and power, there's the beautiful music that comes. It's the beautiful music that comes. What the great good news is that there is someone who has promised to be with us wherever life may bring, whatever might happen, wherever we go, and even when we're not aware of it, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is there. And as the scripture says, who can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Nothing. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And it's the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord, and it's the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us to go on. So the Trinity is God, this big picture. Will we totally ever understand it? No. Maybe someday when we're at the feet in the kingdom, the feet of Jesus and in the kingdom. But for now, just trust. Trust that this God is bigger than we can conceive of and loves us and has sent us ways that we might understand. May the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And in that name, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. 
For Christ came into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is offered to us as we take Holy Communion and to remind us that as often as we eat from the bread and drink from the cup, do this in remembrance of him. Do this in remembrance. So Jesus is with his friends in the upper room and he takes the bread and he asks for blessing to be on it upon it and he breaks it and he says this is my body that's broken for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins and then he takes the cup after dinner and he says ask blessing upon it and says this is my blood that's poured out so as often as you eat of the bread and drink from the cup do this in remembrance of me God loves us so much he came to earth to show us his love, and then did not leave us orphaned, but sent us the Holy Spirit. May we take our elements now. O oh Lord, we ask that you will pour your Holy Spirit out on these gifts of bread and juice, that they will become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we might be one with you, one with the world, and one till Christ comes again. The bread of life given for each, take and eat. The blood of Christ, may we drink. Let's pray. O oh Lord, empower us. Empower us through your spirit that we might be the hands and feet of Christ. That when people see us, they might see you and not ourselves. And may we go forth, Lord, knowing that no matter what, you never leave us nor forsake us. For you are our God, our creator. You have sent us your Son, our Redeemer, and we have the Holy Spirit who sustains. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us stand and sing together. Oh, sovereign God, oh, matchless King,
And now may you go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go knowing that he is faithful to his promises and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Go, for he has called you to go. Make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.